It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Hello and welcome to Alive After Reading. I'm your host, Tim Niederreiter, and with me today is author Scarlett Holloway. Welcome to the show, Scarlett. Hi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Scarlett, you write uh, motorcycle club romance, is that correct? Yes, I do. Yeah, what are, what are the titles of your books and a little bit about them? Well, the series is called The Sacred Heart Continuum. And um, my first debut release is actually um, October 31st, and it's called Policy of Truth. Okay. So, so Policy of Truth. So what's this, uh, what is, you say there, I think, did, you mentioned there was a twist with this one. It's not, ju- it's not just a straight up motorcycle club romance thing, right? No, not at all. Um, everybody's used to the hot alpha male when it comes down to motorcycle clubs. And this is a twist because it's actually an all female motorcycle club. And it's about, you know, them and the men who fall in love with them. Nice. So is this, uh, I mean, have, have you got, uh, any, I guess side ups, like, uh, Side, uh, what am I trying to say? Any kind of blending of genres here, or is it more of a straight romance for each book? Oh, no, it's a um, action adventure thriller. Uh, you have your romance, you have tragedy, you have laughter. I mean, it's um, so many different categories that it can fit into, honestly. Excellent, just roll them all up into a ball. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> about me, you know, the queen of the cliffhangers. Ooh, cliffhangers. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to say, people, I, I hope people will forgive me for the cliffhanger at the end of my uh, the second book in my series, but I wonder if maybe they won't. Book, two, <laughs> book three, we came out just a week later. So, But I still think people are st- might, be, might be, I didn't get any feedback yet because they're still, still kind of small, but I'm worried about that cliffhanger. I'm like, I feel really bad for doing that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cliffhangers people will scream. I've actually have gotten messaged on um Facebook and through text messaging as well. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so <laughs> people, yeah. But yeah, I'm not for you, it, so. What who would have thought that readers would want to feel kind of you know, feel safe at the end of their story, I guess, at the end of a, <laughs> the end of a book. Well, feel like, I mean, ah, it's all it's all over. Yeah, that's why they call it the happy ever after. But I mean, I definitely give them that happy ever after. But then I take them a little bit further in the epilogue, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah. No. So. Oh, that's they call that the stinger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part of the end of the horror movie where Jason's still alive. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I actually, uh, yeah, I, I don't need to go into this too much, but I have this one book where I have a character named Stinger. I love that phrase, that term. Actually, and, he's the, and, it, and he's the villain, and he appears at the end of every chapter. But anyway. Are you ready to laugh? Sure. The main male character, the hero of my book, is named Sting. Sting! Nice! <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. Uh, but he's the hero. He's not some kind of well, unless I uh, don't spoil anything, maybe, maybe down the line, it turns out not to be the hero. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a <laughs> twist in there somewhere. No, he's, he's the hero. Okay, so I mean, if, if, he's, he's the love interest. They're not be leading us on here. Mm. <laughs> hey, who knows? Me already. <laughs> authors, authors like to trick people. It just, just, the, just my natural suspicion. Yes, of course. No one thinks. Um, yeah, so uh, so I, I am I'm probably I'm probably the worst guest talking man on the in the podosphere, <laughs> given that I, I mean, every time it seems like I've, I'm catching myself. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm kind of browbeating the guest. That's what I feel like anyway. So anyway, so you've got this book out uh, coming out on October 31st. I, I guess that that's uh, that's interesting. You'll be competing with a lot of horror books. I wonder if there's going to be a. I mean, a lot of horror writers want to come out on the 31st, right? <laughs> They do. They definitely do. But um, I'm a big Halloween fan. Uh, so it's my favorite holiday. And I've just 
I don't know. It's just a symbolism to me. So I just, yeah, we're going to definitely do it. And I've got a lot of good support to make sure that it happens and we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I, I just think if, uh, I, I guess it just came to mind because I know a lot of, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a bunch of horror writers. They're, they're great folk. And there's this whole month of, that has become extremely, at least this year, it seems like they're just coming out of the woodwork. There's so many books, so many movies, that kind of thing. So anyway, um, do you, are you, are you a fan of, uh, scary fiction at all? Obviously it's not quite what you're writing, but you know, oh, horror fiction yes. Stephen King is my ultimate favorite. I actually have a bookcase dedicated to all his first editions that I have. Yes. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's really cool. I, I just read Stephen King catches catch can, you know, I I do really like his style. Yes. He's, he's an awesome writer. I, mean, I, I think I definitely, people, enough people have said that. <laughs> yeah. And his son is just as amazing. Oh, author. Yeah, Joe Hill. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really in love with like Dean Koontz as well. Mm. And um, there's another Koontz. I forget his name. Steve, is it Stephen Koontz? I don't know. I only heard um, Dean. Yeah, he, I think it's Steve Koontz. He's okay. also a horror writer as well. And yeah, I I do love re- Clive Barker. Oh my gosh, be oh, still my Clive Barker's heart. amazing. Yeah. Yes. So uh, <laughs> big. And Clive Barker did a lot of stuff that was borderline fantasy and horror kind of stuff. Oh, it's definitely. Really cool. uh, the one and, about the magic carpet, the tapestry. Oh, that, I'm not sure if I've got read that one. Hmm. Oh, you've got I've to. Got to. I've got to illuminate myself. I've got to go educate. <laughs> yeah, he he did one about a tapestry that wove a story, and it and and it was a horror fantasy story. It was brilliant. Oh, I think I, then the title of that one's on the tip of my tongue. There was a was it a series? Um, I think I, it might have been. Anyway, I I, yeah. I think the title. I think I can guess which one that is by title, <laughs> even unless it's not in the title. Yeah. Anyway, um, so so yeah, so. And so you and you said this that your series has your your book has adventure and as well as other genres. But do you do you have? I mean, I don't know why I'm talking. We're talking about thriller and scary stuff. But do you have any <laughs> suspense and that kind of thing? Yes, um, because the the book takes place in a fictional city in California called Shadow Falls, which is basically North Edwards, California, uh, and. Um, uh, Boron and that whole area right there and uh, in the Mojave Desert. So they end up going up against a rival motorcycle club. And so a support group has to come in and help them because, I mean, they're women. They're only going to be able to do so much. And, I mean, no matter how, you know, badass of a woman you are you're still going to need help because it's just i mean we're women and it's them meeting and coming together and there is a ton of suspense in it um, with different things going on there are twists in there that you will never see coming so i mean it's it's action-packed it's a fast-paced novel um you laugh, you cry. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's a very, very good book. Of course, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but <laughs> no, I mean, it truly really is. Uh, I, well, it's, gr- I mean, I'm, I wish I had that kind of confidence, not to say you're wrong or anything. I'm just serious. Like I don't have that kind of confidence in my own work most of the time. So it's well, it's, it's, it's cool to listen to hear another author. Do you, do you, I mean, are you just naturally like that? You just that, because <laughs> I, I how do you get there i'm like hey, i wish i had that i mean it's it's because it's so fresh and it's so new and the thing is is i used to run my own club mm. so i put a ton of realism in it as well and any reader who knows nothing about any form of type of writing club can actually understand everything that's going on. And I take all the tropes of, 
how a lot of women view um, bikers as being brutal and mean and abusive. And no, there are some bad apples out there, you know, but with the way I'm portraying it, it's just so much more real and hopefully it'll shed a new light, you know, on yeah. that. And that's, that's why I have so much confidence in it. Well, that's, that's so, great. And I mean, the firsthand experience, there's nothing like that to give you a boost. Yeah, exactly. And authenticity and all that. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I, I mean, it's true. I mean, I've actually interviewed quite a few authors who are really confident. I'm always jealous of that though. I just have to say it. I mean, I always like, <laughs> oh, I wish I was that kind of person. But, yeah, no, see that yeah. confidence really honestly only goes so far because then the day it releases and you start seeing the <laughs> reviews come through, then that's when you start going, oh my God, do they like it? Do they not like it? Oh my God, it's not something like <laughs> I wanted. It, it, that's when mm. that confidence, you know, you really need it. It's threatened. Yeah. You need, the, you need a strong base to go from. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah, that's interesting. I just. I wonder, and I actually, I, it's kind of funny. I was I was talking to this about this with my my kind of the kind of ghost behind the show in some ways, my twin brother. Uh -huh. um, I was talking with him about personality because we are kind of di we're quite different in personality, right? Uh, him and I, but never mind that. It's, it's just like I have kind of a classic artist temperament kind of thing going on, where right. I get. But I think and most writers have something some ed kind of side to them that's like that. I think yes. because we're all artists on some level. Um, at least the fiction writers. Uh, yeah, and I, 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 I want. I don't want to be discriminatory though. Even the nonfiction writers have definite skills that they have to develop, and it's the same as any other art. But uh, I guess what my point is is that that lack of uh, that that focus on like I like I think I focus on stuff like trying to be unique. Like you said, your book's very fresh, and. I just wonder, I mean, I, I, I don't worry about my books being too fresh so much. I, that's one thing I have confidence in, but it's interesting because I'm always searching for something crazier to do because I do write fantasy and science fiction. Right. Do you, do you, but you, you kind of said, but the way you say it, it makes me think you're going back to, to something that's more authentic, more genuine to the real world. I think that's right. really interesting. I, I don't know if that's a question. I'm, I'm a <laughs> well, like with my other series that I'm writing was my family saga that is like very dallas -y, yellowstone -y kind of family saga. That one, you know, you're doing the twists and the turns and very soap opera-y, you mm -hmm. know, but with, and you, you can have some realism in it and you can't, but when it comes down to the MC romance, which is a very, very, just huge niche in the writing community. Um, I want something that's going to stand out and having that authenticity, having the fact that every woman in this club and in the books is a woman that I know. Mm -hmm. And I, have asked them, you know, if I can put them in the book and it's my way of saying thank you to them for things that they have done for me in my journey. And it's immortalizing them and giving them something to look forward to. And also allowing the readers to know, you know, Hey, this person's real, you know, yeah. what you, and part of what they go through, um, each character, the books start with a prologue of their past, the main character for that book and their past. And one of the characters that is a constant through the book, her name is Lace, and she is the president of the club. And she will end up stumbling upon this character or like in Policy of Truth, it's her name is Tamara. And she has been beaten by her ex. And other things that have happened. And she picks this girl up. She gives her back her self-confidence. She gives her back her life and gives her something new and a new family to hold on to. And each book 
has this character's past, but it's also the person's that I know's past that they've allowed me to, you know, bring into light and to empower them in this novel. And um, also each book, what a lot of people don't realize is each book is based off of a song. Like this book is Policy of Truth by Depeche Mode. Mm, and okay. Each and like the next one is Hush, and that's by um, Hell Yeah. <laughs> and um, each s- chapter is written to a song. So when they open up the book, each name of that chapter is a song that it goes to. So they have a playlist also to listen to while they're reading the book. Nice. That's really cool. I've yeah. lo- I, lo- I love that idea. And I, I listen to a lot of music while I, while I write. So it's, it, it, that really does resonate with me. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people relate to music. So, mm-hmm. and it gives them that emotional ups and downs that you want with a book as well. Absolutely. So. I've actually thought about, this is one thing I've thought about doing that I've never actually done, but where I structure a book, like a music album, because I really do like, listening to whole albums sometimes. Right. And uh, actually quite a lot. Uh, let, me not, let me not kid people here. I, I like the prog rock, the, the nerd albums. Um, but, uh, you know, but there's just something to it. And, you know, seeing that track list and whatever, seeing the, the and then, you know, and like, yeah, there, and you get a feel for some of these stories just from the, the titles of the chapters, the titles of the songs, whatever right. they may be. Yeah. And that's really neat. Uh, yeah. So do you, do you listen to music while you write? Oh, absolutely. My husband has a full blown playlist for me and he turns it on and puts on his headphones because he's on the computer all the time (laughs) (laughs) and he'll play it for me. And I mean, I'll be like, Oh, there's that goes with that character. So I'll put it in a playlist for that character. And then, Oh, 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 there's a title of my next book and I'll grab it really quick. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's, Music is a huge part of my life. I mean, it's just, I don't know how to no, me too. It. Me too, for sure. I, um, I think, I mean, obviously everyone's different, but I just, I just don't feel right when I'm not, most of the time I have to, I set a playlist before I start my writing. Right. And, uh, and now, and I, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter so much to me in, in my case, what particular songs there are, because uh-huh. it just kind of fades away. And once again, into the story. Right. Um, and everybody's asked me, you know, are you going to put up a Spotify playlist? I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, because I don't know how to run Spotify. Sorry. If you want the playlist, read the book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motivation for people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you can make it. It's kind of a, I mean, it is a little bit backhand, but yeah, it's a, it's a good way to go. I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think I, I personally am a little bit of leery of ancillary material like that, which is like, yeah, it makes the book better or something. I mean, I think if the reader wants to get that extra bit of meaning, let them let them go at it. It'll make them more invested. I think, I think right. that's a good way to. Um, Definitely, uh, because they're with these characters. That I mean, all my beta readers have come back, you know, just in awe, which helps boost my confidence as well. About oh my god, I listened to that song while I read this. I hate you right now. I love you, but I really hate you right now because I ugly cried, you know, and that's, that's what I want. That's the reactions I want. That's why I put the music with it. Yeah. So, that's, and that really, up the ante. I mean, you can up the ante to it from an ugly cry to a hideous cry. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, emotion going there. So yeah. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, do, do, what do you, I'm, I also struggle a little bit with characterization sometimes. So do you have any techniques you use or is it more just going with the real people, that kind of thing, like making it, making them feel like real people by kind of being inspired by real people kind of thing? Yeah. Um, and I try to write in a real voice. My voice mm. when I write is very raw. It's very in your face um, because that's how bikers are. Yeah. And you do not see a bike how else to put it other than King's English, you're not going to see it. <laughs> you know, they're going to talk in a little bit of slang. They're going to cuss. Oh Lord, they cuss. Um, <laughs> you know, but dirty, 
um, is Tamara. Her name is Dirty. That's her road name. Mm -hmm. And she is a very high society, um, very well-to-do girl who has now turned biker. And she does not cuss at all. And that is part of, you know, her personality. And my friend Tamara, who this is about, I don't think I've ever heard her cuss a day in her life. And the only time that you do is when she's really upset and you know, if that slips out, something's wrong. So, you know, you, each one has their own personality by far. And that that's just what makes you so invested in them. That's great. I, Actually, I did. I did that in one of my stories. I had a character that w- I, that I, the very distinctly I remember. He was there's this character uh, that was uh, what was he, yeah. He would stutter when he got upset, but only when he got upset. And it was very right. much a clue. You could tell he was angry because he'd stutter because he, or he he was actually worried about something because he would stutter. Uh-huh. And otherwise, yeah. he was a cool customer. It was pretty cool. I, I I thought that I think that kind of tell is really neat to incorporate into a book and mm-hmm. the kind of. Like the the cursing thing. Yeah, it's very simple. Right. And like with Lace, when she starts to think or when she starts to get upset, she starts clicking her tongue ring. And the Uh. girls know it. And I, you know, and it's something that, you know, you sit there and she's thinking and she starts clicking the tongue ring as you're reading it. And you're like, oh, crap. It's about (laughs) to hit the fan. You know, you learn with, you know, them. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's an important part of a story is having the developing that kind of parallel learning with the right. parallel lessons that teach the 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 readers what the the same things the characters are learning or already knew perhaps. But right. I think it's stronger when the characters are learning too. I don't know. I, exactly. I mean, obviously, it can work either way, but there's a kind of suspense there that, or it's a it's a loss of suspense when the character when the reader knows the character knows something they don't, uh-huh. um, which is. <laughs> Anyway, that that's probably getting a little technical <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so we're we're running a little low on time. Just uh, it's been fun. But uh, absolutely. I, I we talked a little bit about Stephen King earlier, but uh, and and some of your other favorite authors. But is there a favorite book you you've been reading right now? Um, actually, I just got done reading some Stephen King. Um, mm. I read his new one, The Outsider, and which is phenomenal. And then um, I just cracked open his Dr. Sleep because I'm a huge Shining fan. So I'm real curious of where he's going with book two on that one. That's fascinating that he comes out that I mean, I coming out with a book two so much later into such a classic story. Yes. That's such a, that, that's just, I mean, it's daunting. That's no wonder the reviews were, were sometimes mixed for that book, at least that I've heard. Yeah, I mean, the the Shining, what, came out in 78, 79? Yeah, that's a, that's a long time ago to, to have yeah. written the first book. I mean, yeah. And yeah. it's not like you wrote the second book right after that. It's obviously exactly. a very different kind of story. Yeah, Yeah. so um, I was just reading his, and then, like, I'll read. I won't read the genre that I'm writing at the mm-hmm. time, because... Every author will do it. And if they tell you they don't do it, they're lying through their teeth. But if you read the genre that you write in, you start taking ideas from that. And you don't want to do that because you want to make a book your own. Yeah. So if I'm writing, you know, the MC genre, I'm reading horror, I'm reading sappy Nicholas Sparks or Daniel Steele <laughs> or, you know, just a totally different genre. Now, if I'm writing in my family saga, then I'm reading like Cassandra Clare, J.R. Ward, Sherilyn Kenyon, totally different, you know, realm. Right. So yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, you you change it up and that, that's cool. And she seems like you're pretty, as a reader, you're pretty, uh, you know, you, you go all over the place though. Some of those names I actually recognized. I mean, but obviously I recognize most of them. They're actually most of them pretty famous that you mentioned, but, uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, but like, you know, Cheryl and Kenyon and Cassandra Clare, those are urban fantasy, right? Uh, Paranormal type things. And that's, I mean, that's, and that's just, that's a cousin of course, to what I write. So I, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's this range and the genres, of course they brush against each other and the genres really, it's a funny thing how constructed it is, but yeah. Oh yeah. As for me, I am uh, 
reading Noble House by James Clavell, which is very different from the thing I'm writing. Right. I'm writing short little novellas. J- Noble House is over 1,300 pages long. I'm just starting it. <laughs> so it's wow. going to be a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I have the hard copy here, and it is thicker than, well, it is very thick. <laughs> it's I a big totally book. I understand. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing about this book is it takes place entirely in one week. The events unfold over a single week. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Three. It's about and it's it's just, it's just, it's a thriller, but it's an enormous thriller. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's what I hear anyway. I've yeah, just I've heard begun the same it. thing. It just looks so daunting that I haven't even tried to pick it up yet. Well, consider me daunted. I am very daunted. <laughs> 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 dauntless no that's not me i'm i'm extremely <laughs> daunted so anyway yeah <laughs> but uh yeah thanks for thanks for being on the show scarlett thanks for having me I yeah, so where can we, great and so where can people find your book uh and remind us again when they can pick it up and where they can find uh, your other amazon it'll be on amazon um just look up scarlett holloway and it'll be right on there they can find me on facebook and i mean i'm not hard to find and uh, or they can go to scarletholloway.com and sign up for my newsletter on there and I'll be you know sending out updates and stuff and um it will be releasing October 31st so wonderful so as for this show you can find us at mentalsellerpublications.com and I don't know why I said us that's my site mentalsellerpublications.com <laughs> and uh, all, the, all the other old episodes are there, though the, I'm, I'm a little remiss in updating the archives. You might have to go searching through a little bit to come up, to come up with the most recent stuff. It's all there. We are hosted by Libsyn. There I go again. We Anyway, <laughs> and I'm not at all self-conscious. However, you can also <laughs> find it on Amazon.com. The first book, Court Mage, is a great place to start. But don't stop there. It's an amazing series, if I do say so myself. Wait, wait. I think I found some confidence. Anyway. <laughs> Yay! Yes. Yeah. So Court Mage is the first of my uh, Spells of the Curtain fantasy series, and you can find all my other books there as well, Amazon.com. Also, you can find me on Facebook. I'm at Facebook.com slash Tim Niederreiter. And if you need help spelling that, I'm, I think there's a post on my website. So Google how to spell Niederreiter because it is not easy, at least if you don't know. So thanks for listening, everybody, and have a good week. That tears it.